Hello again. This is Skip McCauley, Victor Echo 6 Bravo Golf Tangle. I'm making a video here to show how I did an upgrade on my azimuth drive to a slew gear to tighten up the backlash or get rid of the slop I had in the azimuth drive on my moon mounts dish. The original drive was supplied by an automobile window motor which was coupled to a 501 gearbox. This was then coupled to a large dry shaft that went up to the top part of the dish mast. The top of the dry shaft had a sprocket which was connected over to the main drive of the dish mount using a chain. It was this chain slop that was creating all the problem for trying to track the moon, especially on higher frequencies. This original drive system worked okay for smaller dishes that I used before, but when I built this 21 and a half foot dish, the mass and the wind load of it made it quite uncontrollable in any kind of a wind for tracking the moon. Luckily on the market, uh, the slew gears came up for sale and uh, quite reasonably priced. The other issue with this upgrade was that previously the just the top of the mass rotated for the azimuth. And this upgrade, the whole mass from top to bottom was going to rotate now, which meant it could no longer be clamped solid to the tower. So I needed some kind of a ring gear bearing or whatever to put on top of the tower to support the mast. So after weeks of deep thinking, a cunning plan was devised. The first thing I had to do was build a, a buggy of some sort that the dish would lay onto and roll away once it was disconnected or unbolted from the main mount. It had to be separated because the whole uh, tower frame had to be dismantled and tipped over and hauled over to my welding shop for modifications for the new slew gear drive. One of the first things to be fabricated was some kind of a clamp system so that the big slew gear would clamp to the new 5.5 inch vertical mast. This clamping system was built out of quarter inch steel plate and fabricated from various pieces of uh, pipe that was cut apart and reshaped to mold on the new 5.5 inch mast. The uh, clamping system for the vertical pipe had to be built in a way so that it was adjustable. Uh, lower tabs were uh, built to meet around the clamp and then milled with slots so that the two halves could slide in and out and clamp up to the mast yet be centered around the main mounting plate. The top rotating bearing clamp was built in the same fashion as a big slew gear clamp was. The next part to be built had to be the lower hinge over bearing. Since the new mast will rotate from top to bottom, it had to incorporate a, a, ro a special bearing which is built out of a large truck wheel bearing. The big slew gear weighs so much, nearly 180 pounds, that it cannot be winched up with the mast so it will sit below at the bottom while the mast is tipped over. Finally it was time to start assembling and testing. The tower frame was towed over to the workshop for welding and the top bearing mount was fabricated and, and welded to the top of it. A bolt-on flange was welded to the bottom of the new mast for the new hinge bearing to bolt to. Next the upper rotary bearing was clamped to the pipe for testing. The mast and upper hinge was bolted to the lower part of the hinge on the frame of the tower. With it all bolted together, the whole mast assembly was winched up into the frame and the top bearing was bolted to the new mount. Next on the agenda was to build some kind of mount for the big slew gear and some kind of framework that would make it mount to the tower frame itself. This slew gear mount had to be built in a way so that it would slide past the vertical mast and bolt to the tower frame. Now I had to get the 180 pound slew gear out of the shop and over to where the tower frame was. I had to use a couple of cranes I have laying around which uh, was very labor saving. My homemade jeep crane became indispensable for this whole project of getting it done from start to finish. Uh, couldn't have done it without it. Now the fun began. The mast was once again bolted to the lower hinge point and the mast raised up into the tower frame to see how the hinge would clear the slew gear. It should fit. It was all done on paper, but you never know. And as all in good planning, it fit and worked like a glove. Using a small utility winch mounted on the tower frame, a winch line was connected to the heavy slew gear and the big lift to get it high enough to be able to slide the slew gear mount underneath it began. Once the utility winch pulled up the slew gear high enough, the uh, partially built mounting frame was slid around the mast and put into position. 
then the winch lowered the slew gear down on top of the frame. The big slew gear was bolted to the mounting frame from underneath. This clamping system was assembled onto the slew gear and, and clamped to the mast. The whole framework was just held to the tower frame with C-clamps for testing. The electrical motor was attached, power applied, and the whole system was rotated to see how true it turned. Finally, holes were drilled to the tower frame for the bolts to hold the slew gear mount to its structure. Some welding modifications were done to the actual dish mount to make, match up with the uh, new vertical mast. By the time it finally comes to start hauling things over to the dish location and start reassembling. Once the tower frame was bolted to the ground, the slew gear again was lowered down onto the lower hinge point using the crane off the jeep. Next, the new mast was hauled over to the site and connected to the lower hinge. The upper bearing was installed and the whole system was winched up into the tower frame, bolted in and checked for plumb. Next, the mast was lowered. The dish mounting hardware was bolted to the elevation bearing mount. Once that was done, the dish sitting on its buggy was rolled over to be in position with the mounting frame. It slid over quite well. The holes actually lined up perfectly and the bolts were put through and everything was bolted tight to the mounting frame. A few other mechanical things had to be taken care of, but the moment came that a small utility winch was disconnected and the larger winch from the Jeep was strung through the pulleys to the winch mast. Things were ready to start winching it up into the tower. Tension is over and it's time to bolt the top bearing into the frame. The man lifting elevator was rolled into place to help us install the counterweights and elevation actuator. The following video is a shortened version of how that worked out.
finally, the slew gear azimuth drive upgrade is finished. After hooking up the cabling from the dish to the electrical enclosures, the electrical motors, the um, in new encoder system that's on the end of the worm drive, she was pretty well finished. Testing is still going on and uh, so far everything looks pretty good. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, next is a short clip of the asthma's drive in operation. Thanks for looking.